indirectly you will have peace for your family as well and you have peace in your life and prosperity be within thy palaces let's see the promise of the Lord the promise of prosperity the promise of peace the promise of protection for the people that take this injunction this exhortation very serious and they're obedient and they're praying for the peace of the city as well as the peace of the country in Isaiah chapter 54 Isaiah chapter 54 verses 13 and 14 and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children uh, you will notice how many many for many years now uh, going back to uh, many regimes of different yeah. governments as uh, the disturbances began our children didn't have enough peace to even get to school or to go to school our children didn't have enough peace for the uh, continuation of the school system very well and you will see it has come to the level now where much has been disturbed in the country's educational system that's what we're saying when there is no peace virtually everything is hindered but it says now if we love our city so much if we love our country so much and we pray for the peace of the city and the country it will even affect our children that all thy children shall be taught of the Lord our children will be able to have the teaching of the Word of God they'll grow up in the way of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children even our children will be able to have peace and as our children are peace will be able uh, to continue in everything that we ought to do see the continuation in verse 14 in righteousness shall thou be established thou shalt be far from oppression thou shalt not fear nor uh, and from terror for it shall not come near thee here it's telling us that if uh, we have peace then there will be righteousness as well in fact it says in that righteousness we shall be established thou shalt be far from oppression you see the result of the prayer we love our country we love our city as a result of that we are praying and then it says we will be established there will be no oppression and will even be free from fear and from terror it says it will not even come near and it will not come upon us we go back to the Psalms in Psalm 147 Psalm 147 which? from verse 11 Which? the Lord taketh pleasure Which? in them that fear him Which? in those that hope in his mercy the Lord taketh pleasure in the people that fear him and the people that hope in his mercy praise the Lord O Jerusalem praise thy God O Zion for he has strengthened the bars of thy gates he has blessed thy children within thee he maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of wheat it's also talking about having enough to eat when the commerce is not disturbed when everything is going on as it should go on it says he will even give us the finest of wheat which there is symbolic of food in general and the finest of wheat is talking about the very best that we can have and we ought to have is send that forth his commandment upon earth his watch runneth very sweetly that means then that there will be no disturbance to the preaching of the word of god in fact the watch of the lord will run very sweetly as you have seen from the passages we're reading that whenever there is peace there will be collective prosperity there will be individual prosperity and there will be spiritual prosperity as well when peace is reigning 
The promise is connected with the command in the text. In fact, it says, they shall prosper. They shall prosper that love thee. And as we look at the fullness of the meaning of that prosperity, number one, you'll prosper in your soul. That is, uh, you'll be able to have your quiet time, you'll be able to read your Bible, you'll be able to pray, you'll be able to get to church, you'll be able to do everything you ought to do. If there is retreat, you'll be able to attend. If we're planning crusade, you'll be able to attend. Whatever needs to be done, you'll be able to do it for your soul to prosper spiritually. And that's the will of the Lord in Second, in Third John, verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Beloved, it says, this is the wish of the apostle. Not only of the apostle, it is the will of God. And it is the desire of every right thinking person that you will be able to have prosperity in your soul. And of course, you will be in health. Uh, you know, you don't know how many lives are lost whenever there is disturbance or unrest. Uh, if you are not able, if the ordinary person is not able to get to the hospital, or if the ordinary person is not able to get to the person that might pray for him or help him to be well, how lives are lost. For us to have peace, then if we have peace, there will be healing. If we have peace, the hospitals will function better. If we have peace, the school system will function in a better way. If we have peace, the church too, with its system of counseling and praying and helping people, will function in the normal way. That's the reason we are praying that there should be peace in our country. But then it will bring prosperity to the soul. Number two, prosperity in the family. And number three, prosperity in the church. Although when we're talking about prosperity in the church, we're not just talking about material things. We're not talking about money alone. We're talking about spiritual prosperity. That the church will be able to have, they'll be able to enjoy uh, the peace and the prosperity and the winning of souls. And the work of God will continue. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Verse 31. Then at the church's rest, throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. Here it says that they are dressed, and because they are dressed, that simply means there was peace. And because they had peace in the church, then the Lord prospered the church. And it was not just uh, that they are dressed in one city, look at it in that verse 91, throughout all Judea, and throughout all Galilee, and throughout Samaria, and because of, the, of that the churches were edified, they were walking in the fear of the Lord, they were in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and there was prosperity in the sense that they multiplied, they multiplied. In uh, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, Verse 9. Matthew 5 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peace. And you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our bottom our address is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Say one more time, say, oh, 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 Lord.